This is Tony Delroy's Nightlife. Yeah, renowned Australian photographer Dennis Illich carts his camera equipment and keen eye around the globe, producing some dazzling contemporary and artistic images for A-list clientele. Based in Los Angeles, he works with most of the big Hollywood studios, photographing and producing some classic portraits of their top artists. He recently returned to Australia to promote a book, Amanda Tapping, a photographic essay. He spoke to Gary Bartholomew about his work as a celebrity portrait photographer in Hollywood. I was on the inside working for the for the film distributor, so I was on the red carpet, and I was so abused by the paparazzi. I had things thrown at me. I'd been spat on for being in people's way, and my opinion for people in that industry diminished a lot because of mm. that. And I left. I actually left that in that work because of that. But, you know, there are people who work by a really good and honourable code and people who don't like every industry. Australian-born Dennis Illich is one of the busiest celebrity photographers in uh, Hollywood and London. His specialty has been uh, A-list celebrity portraiture and uh, his photography has uh, been commissioned by a number of major Hollywood film studios and his clients include a lot of A-listed actors, including Daniel Radcliffe, Keanu Reeves, Ryan Reynolds, Sandra Bullock and many others. But there seems to be many other strings to his bow and he joins me. Now. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome back to Australia. Thank because you. Because you're, you're from Geelong originally, aren't you? I am, yes. Born and bred Geelong boy. <laughs> Fantastic. But you seem to traverse the globe now. Where did it all start for you? What, what was the fascination for photography? Well, you know, it, it, it just was born of a passion for films and filmmaking more than anything. And I spent most of my young life in, in Geelong, growing up in Geelong and then Melbourne, working in jobs that I didn't really like. And had, you know, in the mid-90s, was quite um, unhappily married for quite some years. And, and coming out of that, I just needed to clear my head and I went to work in retail. And in that retail job selling consumer electronics, so is where I bought my first camera and uh, started taking snapshots with the camera and actually taking photographs at just, you know, you know, when they have red carpet events for movies and things. And I started sending those photographs into the distributors and um, met a, a publicist there and I would just give those photographs to them for nothing. And they liked those images so much, they started to hire me to do mm. do events and, and big movie launches. And that's how, you know, it, it's been such a whirlwind because I only started photographing um, 10 years ago. I, I, I have trouble figuring out the timeline. You know, one, one moment I'm working selling video cameras to honeymoon <laughs> couples. And the next thing I know, I'm in New Zealand, you know, photographing actors from Lord of the Rings in their hotel rooms and things like that. And it's just, it's just happened so quickly. It's, it's yeah. really... I mean, there must have been a breakthrough moment. You became respected and recognised through the portrait of yes. people like Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah, the breakthrough moment was actually doing intimate photographs with Daniel of his coming of age, really. Um, I was hired to photograph him on, his, on the eve of his 16th birthday. And that came to pass because of the build-up of that other work that I was doing um, for, for Warner Brothers and, and New Line and, um, and Village Roadshow Pictures. Daniel happened to be in Australia holidaying uh, in the mid-2000s or early 2000s. And they put out a commission for Australian celebrity photographers to do a photo shoot with him. And I submitted some work, which was the final veto on it was the family, he and the family. And I, I knew that Daniel loved music. He's, he loves independent music like rock and roll. So instead of sending in all photographs of actors, I actually sent a few photographs of A-list actors to let them know that I can deal with that sort of thing. But then I, I sent in photographs of bands that I took in pubs in Melbourne, hardcore, beautiful rock and roll stuff. And basically he just said, oh, I want to work with this guy. And that's where it all started. And the notoriety and the legitimacy you get from working on with someone like that and the biggest film franchise ever in history helps it, a lot to uh, afford your career. It's astonishing. I mean, yeah. I mean, those photographs are so famous now yeah. because it was his 16th birthday yeah, and, you know, yeah. we've moved on from Harry Potter. And, yeah. you know. And, and, you know, he every, everything you'd ever seen of him up to that point, he looked like a 15-year-old kid. That's right. Bespectable, bespectacled 15-year-old kid. And we worked very hard to make him look like a a very mature, handsome and sexy young man. And mm. uh, it, they really took the world by storm. It was mm. quite surprising, actually. Tell me about celebrity portraiture. I mean, this is an old chestnut, but how do you capture the true essence of the subject matter? I mean, 
how do you capture the mood and, and the real person? Yeah, it's it's interesting. I get asked this a lot, and it is a, it's a difficult question to answer because I think there's a, a lot detracts from that when you do a photo shoot, and I'm starting to be known for these very personal, quite um, soulful, almost a little bit darker images that seem more into the person, which is what uh, people like about the work, especially in, in North America. And I think it comes from removing a lot of things from the equations. You know, I look at what other, you know, photographers who I admire follow, and I look at the photo shoots, and they're, they're big shows. You know, there are, there are five assistants, and there are lights everywhere, and there are, you know, PAs and all this sort of thing, and, and, it's, and it's a really big thing, you know, reflector boards and flashes and managers. And uh, every time I try to do this, I try to make it less about that, and to a point where most of my shoots I will not even have an assistant. Mm. It'll be just be myself and the actor, and you you just warm and you you it becomes a bonding experience. And as a result, because it's just myself, and you know sometimes I'll, I'll have to have somebody helping me. You know you need a little bit of bounce, and depending on the lighting, but it'll be a very very sort of small production in that respect. And um, because of that, the actor is, uh, is more open. People are more open when it's just you and them, you know. And as a result, we end up becoming very good friends. You know, mm. I end up befriending most of the people I shoot. <laughs> yeah. And then going back and doing shoots that become even yeah. more. So it is about t- taking away all that all that fluff that goes around. Uh, Crazy now. I mean, you're known for this wonderful celebrity portraits. You actually did a lot of cinematography. You're the director of photography on that film, Face to Face, which was yes. the first HDSLR film yeah, yeah. in the world, I get mm. it. Yeah. The first commercially released one, yeah. The first one to go to cinema and internationally. Matthew Newton, uh, Sigrid Thornton, Vince Colosimo, um, Luke Ford. A lot of Australian A-list talent. Uh, a film that we did just because... Again, what you were saying about technology, um, ca- these cameras, they decided to start putting a video mode in these big professional cameras. And the quality was so extraordinary that I was actually showing some footage to uh, director Michael Reimer, one of our preeminent directors here, who won you know, countless AFIs for Angel Baby and he's Emmy Award nominated now for you know, all these new American shows. And he was um, captivated by the quality of the footage and he just said, we should do a film Mm. with this camera. And Face to Face started off as Michael and I here in summer and getting a bunch of actors, uh, unknowns, in a tin shed and and filming this this script that he wrote based on a David Williamson play. And the script was so good and started to get so much attention as we were getting it prepared. You know, within six weeks, uh, me bumming around with this camera in, in a shed turned out to be a, a major production with, you know, mm. Sigrid wanted to be in it, Vince wanted to be in it. These people gave of their time because the story was so important about workplace bullying and uh, based on actual events and, and based on the David Williamson play. And to date, it's won over 40 international awards and we shot it in 12 days. I've got to ask you, what do you think of the paparazzi? Wow. <laughs> Paparazzi, you know, it, historically, I, I'm fascinated with it because I mean, people like Ron Galella yeah. in in New York and the famous photos of yeah. Jackie and Anassas. Yeah, I mean, some of those photographs are absolutely iconic and brilliant. They are, and you know, you look at the the shots of Audrey Hepburn walking through the streets of yeah. New York and things like that. I mean, I think it's changed, you know, from what it was in the fifties to what it is now, um, and that the art of paparazzi was magnificent, but the hiding in somebody's dumpster mm. for two weeks. You know, I, I worked that red carpet thing for a little while and I um, I was on the inside working for the, for the film distributor, so I was on the red carpet. And I was so abused by the paparazzi. I had things thrown at me. I'd, I'd been spat on for being in people's way. And my opinion for people in that industry diminished a lot because of mm. that. And I left, I actually left that in that work because of that. But, you know, there are people who work by a really good and honourable code and people who don't like every industry, you know. Thank God you, you left that yeah. <laughs> that world, Dennis. Dennis, you're an international photographer extraordinaire who can tell a great story in just one shot. And uh, as he slips back across the Pacific to the uh, new world of digital film, when next you see a great photograph associated with that movie you've just seen or, or the movie itself, it uh, may have been taken by Dennis. But thank you very much for coming in. Thanks so much for having me. Great pleasure.
there's a theme to Battlestar Galactica, one of the many uh, film celebrity uh, portrait uh, photographer Dennis Illich has worked on. Uh, speaking there to Gary Bartholomew. If you want to uh, see any of his work, um, just put um, Dennis Illich into a, a search engine. Uh, the spelling's a little unusual, D-E-N-N-Y-S-I-L-I-C. And if you put that in a search engine, up. Uh, up the work will come. Um, the recent book was uh, Amanda Tapping, a photographic essay. Uh, 